<sighs> Hi everyone, Nothany no Sleep Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Slater Kinney record, Little Rope. This is the latest full length LP from indie and punk rock outfit Slater Kinney. Once a trio, uh, they are now currently a duo, and also four albums into a comeback that uh, frankly has been a little rocky. I mean, it did kick off with the very solid No Cities to Love, but then things took kind of a nosedive with the poorly executed electronic fusions on The Center Won't Hold. Longtime drummer Janet Weiss ended up leaving the group around the time of this record's release, and it received some negative reactions even among some of the group's most hardcore fans. From there, with Carrie Brownstein and Corin Tucker leading the band, uh, they took a much safer path on Path of Wellness, which in a lot of ways was a very straightforward indie rock return to form, but not a very exciting uh, return. Which brings us now to Little Rope, an album by comparison that I think is a lot more emotionally complicated and chaotic. With at least some of the very anguished emotions on this LP uh, being directly influenced by the recent passing of Carrie Brownstein's mother and stepfather, who uh, were killed tragically in a car accident while vacationing. And may be a big reason as to why we hear themes such as uh, the pain of loss and facing your greatest fears on key songs with this LP. But for the most part, I think you could say the tense emotions fueling this album uh, manifest in the markedly darker and more dissonant direction the music is going in. Because while there's definitely more of an emotional bite to this album, that's for sure, I still came away from this album feeling like it wasn't really a vast improvement on the last couple of Slater Kenny projects, and also question as to whether or not this record is all that distinct in the greater rock landscape right now. The opening track Hell is a very despondent and explosive start to the entire project, with its weary guitar chords and thick distortion, which are cool, but the chorus of this track utterly forgettable, plus the booming garage drums and zany wailing leads have me feeling like I'm listening to a bizarro version of the White Stripes. Sans the thrill of their classic stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of boxes being checked here in terms of what I would expect from a Kinney album, but there's just something missing, which I could also say is the case for Needlessly Wild. Uh, that also doesn't have a strong hook, nor is it an impactful or exciting listen beyond that either. There's a very steady, plain, run of the mill rhythm section at the base of all of it. The drums could not be more basic. Most of the personality in the mix is coming through on the guitars, whose core appeal seems to be just how blemished and sour they are, but not in a blistering or fiery way, as the playing just comes across as sloppy, unkempt, and maybe lacking in initiative, especially on the solo. Plus, the refrain of the song ends up being kind of ironic, given that uh, it's not a very wild song or wild performance, even if the presentation is sort of messy. Much, much messier than usual for a Slater Kinney album, and I'm kind of scratching my head wondering what, what exactly is driving this. What's making the recording and guitar parts just feel uh, so underneath their usual quality? Quality level. For example, on the song Hunt You Down, uh, the playing is so awkward, it feels like somebody staring you down while giving themselves a terrible haircut with a pair of safety scissors, and when they're done, uh, you're definitely going to be expected to give that new do a compliment. Plus, the mixing and EQing all over the track is awful, and the reason as to why all of this is, I think, becomes a bit clearer on Small Finds, whose prickly and dissonant leads read like something off of a classic Sonic Youth record, and is that what this is? Is that what's inspiring all of this? Because, I mean, Sonic Youth is a great source of inspiration for sure. Really a peak of noise rock and six string creativity. So I could see why pulling from their catalog would make sense for Slater Kenny at this point. But with that being said, even with Sonic Youth having a bit of a reputation for making music that's kind of loose, kind of wild, I still think on a lot of their records they brought a lot more finesse performance-wise uh, than Slater Kinney is showing here. I mean, there's even a tightness between the guitars and drums that feels like it's missing on this new record, even in comparison with the last Slater Kinney album, and this has to be a change the band is aware of. Corin and Carrie may just see something in uh, kind of allowing the chips to fall wherever they may this time around, I guess. But unfortunately, the end result of that is not this uncontrollable and exciting rock whirlwind. It's more like amateur hours. The band 
pounds, plucks, and wails their way uh, through one disheveled riff passage after another. There are even a few spots on the record where the unruly guitars uh, kind of undermine whatever hope of a song appealing, even if it is uh, really coherent and has a strong emotional appeal to it. Like on the song Crusader, which is all about feeling controlled or minimized uh, by a supposed crusader who uh, thinks they know better for everyone else. Or Say It Like You Mean It, which is one of the most emotionally painful tracks on the record, all about goodbyes, and goes very heavy on the synth layers too. But yeah, even these spots feel kind of close but no cigar at best. The few standout moments this record has ends up being a Don't Feel Right, where we get mildly spooky synths and guitar licks along with some tense vocal leads that feel inspired by television's Marky Moon. And for what it's worth, the record does have a strong closer in Untidy Creature, which features some very tight and heavy rushes of guitars, bass, and drums uh, that coalesce more functionally than much of what is on this record. Plus a powerful vocal performance, a touching piano break, and some of the best lyricism on the entire record too. Uh, looking at me like a problem to solve, like an untidy creature that you can't push around. You built a cage, but your measurement's wrong, because I'll find a way and I'll pick your lock. It's kind of a shame a track this well put together and packed with conviction uh, is not only more the exception than the rule here, but also arrives at the very finish. Because, yeah, overall, while I do think there is a lot of passion and genuine sadness and stress uh, going into this project, I just think the execution and the writing is uh, quite a bit below what Slater Kinney usually brings to the table, which is unfortunate because their last record uh, did have uh, that nice structure, did have uh, that clean, put together feel to it, but lacked that emotional impact and spark uh, this record seems to have. Hopefully on a future LP, uh, there can just be kind of a better balance of the two, fingers crossed. I'm feeling a, a light two decent five on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Slater Kinney, uh, forever.